five loss streak slump after three wins. Nongshim on the edge. Again, it's been a while since this lineup has played all together, though. Yeah, Ghost is back in the 80 carry role. Yes. Uh, Not very, to mention the, very the team specifically. Yeah. Yes. Uh, last KT match, Carrier scores a solo pog, and it was the shortest game in spring. That was in the Telecom War, of course, against KT. Perfect round record for T1, the first time in six and a half years. Tonight, it will be uh, his second one. So regardless of the map score, he will hit that one. 698 in total. But will he win the 700th? That is the question. Is Baker has recently crested uh, quite a bit of Whoa. games in his career as well, outside of LCK, passing 1,000, 698 here. First one to hit 700 <laughs> in the LCK. Yeah, just take a look at these numbers, just try to absorb them all. Uh, starting from 2013, April 6th. I can, I can only dream. But here are the team stats, Valdez, and as you mentioned, this is a very one-sided affair, uh, you know, and based on what we've seen so far. But beyond the players, right, is actually how well they play the map. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little while here. Is let's take a look at this key player matchup here. Kana, despite some early losses here, does have better overall stats than Zayas here. <sighs> the Ari to close it out, I mean, it has a lot of side lane power. You're very, very happy about playing this into the Hecarim too, because he's going to try to run at your team. You have so much disengage, you can catch him too after his ult is on cooldown. You can charm him, body slam him, hook him. Like, there's, I think the Hecarim is actually a pretty bad pick in this scenario because of all the ways T1 can deal with it very efficiently. Honestly, his fam most famous pick, you know, love it or hate it. I always say this with Kana because I feel like Kana has as many fans as he has haters for some reason. And I'm not sure why that is because I think he's a very fantastic player. He's got a good attitude about the game. And he hit level two, but he did get a great trade. There's the hook already to start us off. So they're not exactly looking for the kill, but again, another fantastic trade here is carry a fun. Jinx push the first wave into turret, then go get a call. Baker's, here. Yeah, Baker's in a little bit of trouble. Carrier is coming up first from the bottom side, and there is the Lantern. Gets him away from the Rise. That's where you see a lot of these Rise level 6 timings here to try to kill the Gragas before he's got his cask. Not going to happen this time. Let's take a look at Ari's win rate. Yeah, three and two so far in uh, LCK Spring 2022. Faker over the course of his career is a 75% win rate on it. Nine and three as they have a bunch of guys in their effort, though level five still. T1 have pulled it over to the right side. Effort and Ghost go over the wall. BDD's gonna have to walk. Shot Blast hits, but it's not really doing too much damage this early on in the game. It's gonna come down to the eye hit, and it's stolen away! The smite is there! Dread will pick it up, and... Often do see Guma pick up these two plates, and it's like, oh, we didn't get Harold, but this is fine. But they grouped up as five here, as the positioning here for Dread is really nice. Surfing around the edge, and T1 can't get any closer because he can ult into them. Smite's missed. Oh, he tried to hit the eye, but he missed. Yeah. Leave that back. Nope. The answer is no, but there is a scanner. Look at this. Oh, he spotted him. I think he definitely saw him he definitely there. Did. He definitely did. Yeah, it's going to be a three on three. The Rift Herald hits, and in goes Owner. Going to boot back the rise right into the rest of T1. As the ult has to be used to get away here for Dread. But will he get away is the question. I don't know, because like, the scan comes down, but then there's no pings, and it's like... Yeah, like he saw him, but did he see him? Yeah, exactly. Like he, he, he physically could have seen him, but were his eyes on that? No pings at all. Just, I don't know. I'm not 100% convinced, uh, based on watching the replay once again, that they did see him, in fact. Uh, but, I mean, especially with the setup, it was very obvious to T1 that they were wait, wait, up there. Wait, wait, though, comms. Yeah, I, I, uh -huh. I don't think he actually saw him. I thought we get the yeah, like he was on. I mean, he said Boya at the end, like he was done. Diligence, like actually gives you false sense oh. of security. Ghost, he has cleanse and he has flash. They're gonna get the hook onto Ghost there as going in here is effort. The charm is going to miss. Do they have the damage onto effort? Is the question though. They absolutely do. Four v three. They will collapse on down there. Got a huge win here on the other side of the map here for Nongshim. And oh. there's a cast. Very nice setup. He's not gonna Deeply have now as T1, and making plays like this, you know, is very proactive. It's a really nice solar flare from effort. He decides to engage in, but it's a war of attrition. You cannot win here, 4v3, as Nongshim. And then they still, like I said, T1, they're... Karia also buffing the hook on that play, very nicely buffering, I should say. Uh, the hook on that play, this time, owner's gonna get the steal. 
uh, onto Ghost, but he has Cleanse, so. Okay, looking for a little bit more as the charm is gonna hit the turret. He hit the turret. The Rift Herald here doesn't give them an opportunity for a clean one, so it's kind of lose-lose for Nongshim terrible for side laning, so. Yeah. Another cast here on the Kana, but this time he's not alone. Yeah, owner is running on. I like that point actually. That's what I was saying earlier. Like it's a side lane build, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, he did go for stopwatch next. No vision here again. The control ward coverage is super good. Here we go. Shreli is on in. The charm is going to miss. I like that they're going for it because you can see. So just like the amount of disengage that we've talked about can be used aggressively here too. Like whenever he does this, carry his lanterns. It's almost like Faker is spacewalk. Oh, T1 should know about this. And this is this damage you were talking about. Look at the Baron. It's already halfway done. They got toppers. We saw what that did in the last series. As Gnome Shim, they back off a little bit, but they have range. Faker goes in, but he cannot stop it from happening. As T1, now they want an engage, but they haven't been able to get one all night. As the damage is coming out from the side of Nomshim, the poke, you see what the Jinx and the Jace are able to do. As T1, they're going to kill only the Jace. Denying this would have been a, a pretty easy first step, but they didn't have bot wave control nor Wallace cooldown on his ultimate, so he should be fishing as much as he can at this stage in time. Then they're really slowing this Baron buff, right? I mean, this is so much resources committed to just get burn down that Baron buff. <laughs> 70 yeah. seconds to go. I like how T1 are very aggressively posturing against this. And, uh, you know, they have some long reigns of their, their own, right? You talked about holding on to the space uh, station. The disengage in the turn is so great. Is We'll watch this play one more time. Look at how cleanly Dread and crew actually disengage here. The box engaged from Karia, not fantastic. Dread's ult here is pretty good. And Kana actually looks for a turn here, but then ends up getting caught. Good play from Karia there. And then Nongshim have to back away. But it was actually a really nice get out and then use the Jace to Both of these teams are looking to hold that thought. Dread caught. They and have remember, vision, they gotta go. Remember what you said about turn as well. They're gonna play that very nicely. And the damage is there too. I mean, the Baron's already down. Nongshim, they do not have the vision. They do not have the ability. T1 trying to fight their way through. Trying to grind their way through this mid lane and get more position on this Elder Drake. It's the next big objective. Faker, he's got the elixir. He lands the charm onto Faker, or rather onto Effort. He's got the damage. Dread is in the back. He's like, well, I can't really engage. This is what they've been fighting for for the last two minutes, and now they've got control. <laughs> Even the box, stay yep. away from my Elder. That's what they're saying. Leona's not here. I mean, Effort is going to have to get Realm Warped over, but the Elder's almost down. Dread, I think he might go for the flip, and he goes, and he's not going to get it. As Zoner is going to take it down, and Dread will be executed. Finally, we get some more kills in this one, as the Moonlight Vigil over the top will miss. But Owner, he's got Elder Buff and a Crescent Guard. He's going to go into all three of them, as this might just be the end of the game, guys. I mean, everybody on the side of Gnome Sim is getting wiped up as T1 finally get the job done. Full ace here. And T1, they knew their win condition, they knew their objectives, they knew the turn they had. They fought for mid-prio tooth and nail, and when they had it, they got both. Nongshim couldn't walk into a no-vision Baron pit, and then when it came to Elder, they had to, they had to desperately try, they had to roam warp in, but it was not going to happen. Great team effort. T1 winning this game by their macro, their game sense, it's a low kill game. But they take it in flying colors here with their ability to understand how to set up on objectives, what, which fights not to take. The first Rift Herald fight they didn't have control over, walk away, trade turrets, but don't actually give up vision over these critical objectives. Got each and every Drake to lead to a fast Elder. Well, it was banned away, right? So as Dread, 0.8K. Oh, no. um, he, he, he played a game, like he played a game against an Ari, against a Thresh, against a Gragas. What are you gonna do? Like your opportunities are, are none. You have no chances to engage. You have no chances to team fight. You could never find anything. あ、ナイス。あ、気持ちもんで、ちょっと結構簡単さんとるぞ。ベンダーかげ<笑><笑> 
편하게 편하게 아 근데 첫 번째 전용 뺏겨서 그런 거긴 해 인정할게 그건 많이 왔어 되긴 했는데 인정할게 현주환 